Good work, boys. Looking sharp, looking sharp. Love it. Oh, go, go. Keep on going, guys. Uh, a, a mate's phoning me. What does Bill want? Bill, how's it going up there in Auckland, mate? Not good. We suck without you. Yeah, yeah, I heard you didn't do so well with um, Jimmy. I mean, you could have phoned me earlier. I could have helped you out. How does a manager not win with those players? I mean, all he had to do was play a 4-2-3-1 instead of a stubborn 4-3-3. Four, three, three. The squad was perfectly built for a 4-2-3-1. You have Max Caputo, Justin Keat, Central attacking the fielders. If you just rang me, I could have helped you out, Bill. I could have helped him out. He might still have a job. Are you interested in a return? Uh, I mean, have you fixed the registration issue? Not yet. No, no, I, I'll, I'll stay here, Bill. I've, I've literally just done tons of transfers. They gave, they're paying me more than you're paying me. What? So, you know, I'm actually kind of better off down here and just quietly, I'm a South Island guy, so, you know, prefer it down here a little bit out of the chaos and the traffic and stuff. But I need you. I need to win. Winning is everything. Yeah, I do know you like winning. Um, just just get the new guy to play a 4 2 3 one build. You'll be fine. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, and also, make sure he doesn't sell Georges or Ivan before they qualify as being New Zealanders too. That would be greatly appreciated. Just that and the 4 2 3 one and you'll win the league this season. You should anyway. Especially with George going to Saudi Arabia. Like, he, that, that'll, that'll weaken the Phoenix. All right. Okay, yeah, I've got to get back to training, Bill. So, um, look, sorry you didn't win, but, yeah. Nice to talk, Sean. Okay, bye, Bill, bye. Come back soon. Oh, he does not like losing, does he? A party in the streets in the city's on fire. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 41 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with the All Whites and with Kashmir Technical and coming up today we're going to play our first game in the Cheatham Cup this season last season these guys are runners up hopefully we can go one better and we start off by playing a team we played in yesterday's episode in Fury Me Base but this time away from home so we can do a bus trip and off the back of that going to take on one of three teams currently in the fight to go through to the National League Championship from the Southern League, and that is Selwyn United. So if you're looking forward to those two games coming up in today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but yesterday we played our first couple of games in charge here at Kashmir Technical, both in the Southern League, where we did take on Ferry Mead Bays as well. As Otago University also did a bit of a squad run through as well, going into those first couple of games of these seasons. So if you missed that one and want to catch up, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, no change to our squad off the back of that thing. Now we're pretty good in terms of transfers for the rest of the season, but we do remain unbeaten off the back of that episode, as you would expect, considering we are expected to be the second best team in the country this season. We backed up those wins in yesterday's episode, actually, with a slightly narrow one here as we took on Nomads. This was 3-2, got off to a terrible start conceding early, but thankfully, not too long off the back of that, Bailey Stevenson scored from a corner, I think that was, with him being a centre-back. Then our Brazilian central attacking midfielder in Emerson Aliosa, he put us in front just before the half-hour mark, and shortly off the back of that, we made it 3-1 through Michael James Gilbert, who did start this game because Mohamed Al Ghazali, he got injured before this, but he did a decent job there, popping up with a goal. They grabbed one back late through Jacob Anderson with around 15 minutes left, but thankfully, we just did enough to hold on. We are certainly the better team in this game, but the same amount of shots on target from both teams, but thankfully, made it three wins from three to start off the Southern League season. Off the back of that, things have been a lot more comfortable. Yet again, took on Otago University, 6-1 win there away from home. Absolute freshing. The same can be said when we took on Ferry Mead Bays away from home. Bit of a precursor to this first round of the Chatham Cup, which, if you're wondering, is the New Zealand version of the FA Cup slash Australian Cup that we were playing with AFC Auckland. But a 5 1 win there at Barnet Park. Again, pretty comfortable despite the fact that, yet again, we did concede quite early that. Bit of a concern off the back of yesterday's episode, but thankfully a bit more comfortable when we took on the Coastal Spirit. Declan Tyndall, he started this game at left wing, actually played quite a rotated team for this game. As you can see, the fixture list getting quite packed here now in the month of May, but a good 2-0 win there, nice and solid away at the Coastal Spirit. So it does mean we are perfect so far, six wins from six as we approach the halfway mark of the National League season, albeit I think it's fair to say 
We've taken on some pretty weak teams in the first half of our season, as you'll see shortly by the Southern League table. We'll just bring it up and get rid of the other ones. We are on top three points clear of the team that we do take on second up. And at today's episode in Selwyn United and Christchurch United are uh, down in third. That's a bit surprising. Would have thought that'd be the team who'd also go through to the National League Championship out of the Southern League. And already, even though there's still eight games to go, I think the likes of Nelson Suburbs, Fury Me, Bays, and the rest are probably too far behind to have any chance of making that National League Championship. So we're certainly in a good position, especially with a plus 19 goal differential. Hopefully we can keep ourselves there in the latter half of the season, considering we are still yet to play Selby United or Christchurch United. The games against those two teams could be quite crucial in seeing which two of the three do go through to that National League Championship. But yet again, first up today, we take on Ferry Me Base 2. Pretty comfortable wins over them so far since we have made our way to Kashmir. You saw the one yesterday's episode, albeit that was helped out by an early red card one of our former AFC Auckland players in Oliver Milicic, and obviously that 5-1 win not too long ago in the Southern League. So based on that, this should be a team that we can beat. And to be fair, a bit stronger than we've been for a wee while going into this game. As you can see there, bottom right corner, quite a few players have been out at various times of injuries recently, including our first choice goalkeeper in Josh Hawkins, also Masan who's been really good so far here at Kashmir Technical. Mohamed Al-Ghazali, he is back as well, can step in for Gilbert, albeit he's been doing a great job, as you saw before, currently joint top goal scorer in the National League. And Elijah Just as well is back. He is the backup to our Brazilian central attacking midfield, but is in need of game time. He'll probably get that through the B team. Just two players missing for this first round of the Chatham Cup. First off, Jorge Pajas our backup defensive midfielder, so that's not too much of a miss, seeing as Louis Munoz has been in pretty good form to start off life here at Kashmir Technical, and still out but not too far away is the best player in the league in Rosane Bagaggio. He is not too far from being back as our star Brazilian left backs. Just a couple of injuries going in to today's episode, but hopefully can still do a job here as we've done a couple of times already this season over Ferry Me Base, but seeing as this is an away game, and probably the least interesting based on table position, it's time for a bus trip across Christchurch to make our way to Barnet Park. And to be fair, I say a bus trip across Christchurch is actually not too much of a trip at all. This is a little bit of a local derby around the new Brighton area of Christchurch. There we are there at Garrick Memorial Park. I dare say that's where we're going to meet up for all our bus trips in the Southern League, seeing as most of the teams are based in Christchurch. It's just a 10 minute drive, 6Ks away, going through the suburbs and getting to around about the Sumner Beach area. That is where Ferry Mead do play at Barnet Park. Ferry Mead itself actually a bit more down there around Mount Pleasant, but their park is in sort of the Red Cliff Sumner area. So that's where we're making our way to. In today's episode, we'll see if anything does pop up on the 10 minute journey before we do make our way to take on Ferry Mead Bay's yet again. And we've started our bus trip now towards Barnet Park. We've just gone past the Canterbury Memorial Gardens as well as Crematorium. Don't think I need to show you guys too much of that. And also just gone past the BP, as you can see back there. But Roadworks, hopefully this won't delay our trip too much. Typical New Zealand Roadworks all over the blooming place. And to be honest, not much has been happening so far on this bus trip. Just been making our way down the remainder here of Linwood Avenue onto somewhat Humphrey Street. Not too sure what's going on here. Apparently this street has two names. We're just starting to make our way past this dirty stream, which I don't think I'd recommend too much for swimming in. But we're still making our way now towards the enemy territory in Ferry Me Basin now. The sun comes out because good old Kashmir Technical are in town. And still making our way here down Lidwood Avenue slash Humphrey Street. I've just realized here on the right hand side, this is the Charlesworth Reserve. Now to be fair, I've driven past this a few times back when I was at university out at Lincoln, not quite in town itself. But did make my way to the new Brighton Sumner side of town on the odd occasion. And I've always wondered what's actually in that reserve. As it turns out, it is home of the endangered Black Bill Gulls. So there you go, you're welcome Christchurch City Council, there's some free publicity. And now we've made our way a bit past the reserve, now we start to get towards some more shops and food and general things. Now we did a bus trip back in Auckland a little while ago, I can't remember exactly why, it might have been for a New Zealand game that got played at Albany I think. Some of the stops on the way were a bit rubbish, including a Mitre 10, 
that minor 10 there i'll zoom in on it a little bit that's a proper minor 10 mega not like that pathetic one that you saw in auckland a couple of episodes ago that's a proper big south island minor 10 hardware store how they should be and just a bit down the road from that minor 10 mega which is actually appropriately sized now we're making our way down Berry Mead bridge this is actually apparently a bridge doesn't look like one but i quite like this one because it doesn't look like one that I should be able to drive the car off. So hopefully we'll be nice and safe here with my bus driving skills in Christchurch. Thankfully, does look like that will be the case. Also, have just noticed back the uh, chiropractor and yoga that might be quite good on the way to the game. Maybe need to stop there for a little bit. And in fact, maybe I've spoken too soon about the Ferryman Bridge because now this does actually look like a proper bridge. So hopefully we can make our way over this safely. Whoa. I think, no wait, hold on, it's, it's not working, yes, we're over the bridge, oh, oh, so much better than Auckland, and continuing on down the road from the bridge, because thankfully this time actually made our way over, you can start to see a little bit of the seaside, which we do get here in this new Brighton Sumner Theory Mead area, also there's a proper bus, we probably only have a minibus here at Cashmere Tech, albeit being professional, maybe it's a nice fancy bus that we've got here, seeing as we are quite a loaded team, it looks like, but making our way here, down a road which is appropriately called main road for obvious reasons but we'll keep making our way down here and should eventually get a bit closer to our venue for today's game in barnet park and still on the main road we haven't quite hit a bridge but this is looking a little bit treacherous if we do just lose our direction here on both sides a road right in between the ocean it looks like or the lake or the inlet not entirely sure hopefully this will be all right it does look pretty solid compared to the bridges albeit if i try and go too far at once that's where things do get a bit tricky i think we'll just make sure we can get over this slight bridge looking thing here yet again i think we're safe christchurch bridges a lot easier to drive over than the ones in the North Island, I think it's fair to say. And continuing to make our way down Main Road here in the Ferry Menu Brighton area, I was going to stop and have a look at a real fruit ice cream shop because they are really good here in New Zealand, seriously. If you're in the country, try one. They're top notch, but unfortunately, couldn't actually tell it was one from the side of the road. But this is a fish and chip shop. That's the post-match feed sorted out. And just down the road from that fish and chip shop, we eventually make our way to the venue for today's game, this is Barnet Park. We'll try and make our way here down the driveway and actually figure out where the ground is because I'm not too sure exactly where this is going to be. We'll just see as we make our way past the playground. That'll keep all the kids happy while the adults watch some football. But we make our way here to a way smaller car park than we've got at the Garrick Memorial Park. But here it is. There's Barnet Park, be fair. That really looks like about all we need to show you guys. I can't actually go any further. Here's where we're playing here against Ferry Me Bays. I imagine they'll put some goals up somewhere and we can get the action sorted out. I think over there, that's probably the embankment slash stand here for Ferry Me Bays. But this is where we're playing our first game of today's episode. I imagine that might be the club rooms there for the aftermatch. I'll zoom in and see if it looks like it is indeed it is. Ferry Me Bays soccer points off there for saying soccer instead of football and there looks like might be a couple of players warming up before the game but there's our first bus trip here in the southern league as we're about to take on ferry Mead bays in the first round of the chatham cup and here are the team sheets for our first game in this season's chatham cup the are ferry Mead bays they are still going with a 4 free free look pretty similar to what we've seen the last couple of times that we have played them including in yesterday's episode we come into this one in hot form a couple of changes though at the back, Paney for Stevenson, who's on a bit of a heavy workload. And also, we've got Nzalgi at left back, still with Bagigio out with injury. But apart from that, full strength. And hopefully, can go one better in the cup than we did last season. And it's only taking a couple of minutes for the first highlight of this game. Trying to get something going here from a throw and down our left-hand side. And Adam does FM there with a shot. It does get blocked and falls quite nicely there for Bukuli in goal. For Ferry Me base, just like yesterday, even though this one is away from home, we are in the yellowy. Brazilian looking outfit and Ferry Me Bays in the dark blue with the white shorts but the goalkeeper pumps that one deep and we look to build up from the back that pass there a little bit loose but thankfully the Pane can control it and now the star man in my son is on the ball a little bit loose there but rather fortunately Ferry Me Bays also with a poor pass now Walker 
picks out Adam Does FM, beats the defender and Bukeri and will pick up his fifth goal of the season. He loves a celebration, does my boy. He really likes to go for the good old gotcha. But there is the first goal of this game. And yet again, it is scored by Adam Does FM. He must just be wishing he could play Ferry Me Bays every single week because he scores a goal to put us 1 0 up early. And just past the 15 minute mark, next highlight of this game is a corner in our favour. As you'd expect, we are yet again well and truly on the front foot here in this first round of the Chatham Cup. In real life, in the Chatham Cup, you don't actually play teams from outside your region until quite late on. We'll see if that will also be the case in this save. I do think it's not quite, because I'm pretty sure teams like Nelson Suburbs actually taking on the defending champions in Tower and Sea. But from that highlight before, the shot goes just over the bar. But yet again, we are on the attack there this time through Aliosa, the Brazilian central attacking midfielder at the moment. The lone Brazilian playing here at Kashmir Technical does FM for a change running with back to goal, but now Alba team makes his way down that right-hand side, squares it nicely for Nathan Walker. He's onside, and it will count, of course, as I mentioned today, no VAR in the New Zealand system. He does an Irish jig. If Garvin Coughlin was still here, that might be interesting, but I don't think there's any Irish relation now to any players here at Cashmere Technical, but good finish there from Nathan Walker to give us an early 2-0 lead. And only a couple of minutes on from that second goal, now a corner here, which we do take short. Aliosa fizzes that one into the mix of it. Brooks there with a good clearance, but still on the attack here. Lopani tidies that one up. Now Mzagi does lose out on the ball briefly. They try and hoof that one deep, but Orbitina is there to go back and tidy things up for us and start to get us on the front foot again. But already Ferry Me base here looking like they might be in for a long day this time at the moment with all 11 players on the pitch, unlike our first game. In yesterday's episode, does FM will surely pick up an assist here. He has been our key player so far. And Mohamed Al Ghazali with his first goal since coming back from injury. A little bit harsh on Michael James Gilbert that we've dropped him off the back of six goals in a couple of games while he was injured. But that one is pretty much a sitter set up there by Adam Does FM. 3 0 up halfway through the first half. And just a couple of minutes before half time, we do have a highlight here late in the first half. Still a 3 0 lead. Painting's picked up a yellow card here just going into half time. So it might take him off going in to the second half and also give some guys a rest here who might need it with our game coming up against Selwyn United in only a few days' time. Al Ghazali there, I thought was offside. He was interestingly placed, but apparently that goal is going to stand and we make it 4 0 just before the half. Walker here back to Aliosa. That looks like a very close call, but Al Ghazali picks up on that ball over the top and beats their Bukalian goal to make it 4 0. We'll wait to see the lines here, as that did look pretty close to being offside. But thankfully, he is just on gets in behind Cousins and puts that one away. And that should make it 4 0 at half time. And this game really already done and dusted. He'll be going through, you'd imagine, to the second round of the Chatham Cup, Ferry Me Bays up to very little indeed. And we might make some changes here, as I said, take off Payne on that yellow card for Sean Stride, and also give a rest to him, Zalgi at left back, Brian Young, Jack Moore, and also Ryan Hennifer for Munoz, seeing as a couple of regulars in those positions are currently out injured. We'll give those guys a rest before that big game in the league against Southern United, but very happy with how that first half went. 4-0 up in the first round of the Chatham Cup. And it's taken until just past the hour mark for the first highlight here of the second half. Yet again, a frown for us here inside of the final third, continuing to pile the pressure here on Ferry Me Bays. Of course, yesterday bet them 6 1, albeit that time against 10 men. This could actually end up being worse for them with all 11 on the field. Lovely touch that from Nathan Walker to split the two defenders there off the assist from Al Ghazali. That makes it 5 0. This is a not very good day for Ferry Me Bays. That stadium is absolutely massive compared to what it does look like in real life. But nonetheless, we're tearing them apart here at their home ground in Barnet Park. Walker must have just been onside. Lovely touch, though, to get past the defenders and beat Bukhari 5-0 with a half hour left. And just inside the last 15 minutes of this game, there is actually a free kick here for Ferry Me Bays. They might get a chance here to score a goal like they did yesterday. Ling plays that one across to Anderson. Takes on a shot looking for that top right corner. But it goes wide, still 5-0. to zero. And just in the last five minutes of this game, a late free kick here in our favourite. Emerson Aradioso will score through a hit. was not expecting a central attacking midfielder to be on the end of that one. But it is a goal. Al Ghazali, interestingly, taking the free kicks 
also a bit weird being our striker. Not too surely what's going on with our set piece routines, but to be fair, it has worked. That makes it 6 0. The same amount of goals as we scored against them yesterday when they had 10 men, but this time we keep a clean sheet. We're able to take off some important players early to make sure they'll be fit for our league clash. And we do take on Selwyn United, one of the three teams, as you saw earlier, who should be in the hunt by the looks of the table for progression through to the championship stage of the National League. But that is a very comfy win in the first round of the Chatham Cup. We'll just go forward and see if any big teams have been knocked out, but otherwise I think we'll just skip forward and get straight into that Selwyn United game. Can save a bus trip for those guys until a later date, because otherwise two bus trips in the episode might be a little bit too much. But just going down here, and as far as I can see, no big names being knocked out yet. Wellington Olympic, they have won. Just keep going down further. Also, Bay Olympic, they're a decent team. We keep going down. Auckland City just get past Northern Rovers. That's one of the big teams that we definitely need to keep an eye out on the team expected to finish above us. Continue to go down here. Christchurch United win, as do FC Nelson. Just keep on going down here to see if more big names, they do pop up. We keep going down here on this list on the left-hand side and eventually make our way to the bottom. Don't think any big names have been knocked out just yet, but we're through to the second round. Off the back of that 6-0 win over Ferry Mead, and we'll come back shortly for a near top of the table clash against Selwyn United. And we are back with the second game of today's episode against the team right up there in terms of the Southern League in Selwyn United. They're going with a 5-1-2-2. Interestingly, one of their centre-backs, I'm pretty sure is the guy that's been helping me do the thumbnail designs this year on FM24 for my video. So hopefully he doesn't prove too much of a pest in game there in Western. But in terms of us, we're bringing back both Hovar at left back and Stevenson at centre back, and hopefully can continue our winning run here at Kashmir and stay top of the league. And just shot the 10 minute mark, first highlight in this game might be in our favour on the ball here, and looking yet again to camp ourselves inside of the opposition half, yet again we're in the yellow, the opposition in the darker uniform, good work there from Ariosa, just glides for a few defenders, plays the ball forward there, forward does FM, but Weston, my thumbnail guy, gets a foot in, and Adam does FM, my son, can't quite, Score the first goal like he usually does for us here in these games. A corner, yet again, Mr. Thumbnails. He blocks that seriously. Blake just can play well against other teams, but not my one, albeit. Hopefully, we'll be okay, even if we don't beat you. But still nil all coming up to the 15-minute mark. And just shot the half-hour mark now. A free kick here in our favour going far post. Looking for Hover in that one. A good save from the Selwyn goalkeeper. Duty foul there on the sun, but it does break up the play. Still nil all at the half hour mark, certainly on top of six shots, but so far none on target, albeit as I say that, we eventually get one off, but it's still nil all. Now a player on this next highlight is down for Selwyn United there towards the top of screen before, but now does FM makes his way forward down this left hand side. Squares that nicely for Munoz, but yet again a shot that does get blocked. Might actually be a chance here for Selwyn on the counter attack, but thankfully it's Shingase can break it up. Lots of chances, but not many shots on target. Still nil all as we get a bit closer to half time. And it looks like that might be the score, albeit late free kick here for Selwyn. That takes a decent save from Hawkins to put that one out for a corner. Might be a late chance here for Selwyn to actually grab a lead here at home before half time, which based on stats and highlights would feel a bit harsh, but good defensive work there from my son that will keep it at nil all going in to half time. Now, Louis Munoz, to be fair, being very good for us so far this season at Kashmir Technical, but is on a 6.3. So we might just see if Ryan Hanna can come on for him at half time, kind of like in that previous game, but this time because of ratings. I think Lepane might be better suited to being a defensive midfielder than Hanna, though, and indeed that's the case with 11 tackling. So we'll make that sub and just switch those two around in the defensive midfield, but pretty happy with how we are playing. Just need to score a goal as we're still locked up at nil all. And it's taken 10 minutes of the second half for us to get the first highlight here. And yet again, we are on the front foot here with a front inside the final third. Aliosa looking to add to his tally from those previous games against Ferry Me, but unfortunately, that one goes just wide looking for that bottom right corner. Certainly, the power just not quite the placement. And now a chance here for Selwyn to make their way out from the back, but they just lose position there as they start to make their way into our half. Now Hover, the former MacArthur Bulls man, is just doing some stuff here down that left-hand side, albeit poor touch, but then 
they give it away there. I think that was through Makai to be fair. Possession not being held on to well. Now a chance there for Al Ghazali, but that one goes just over the bar. He's only going fairly on a 6.6, .6, and it was kind of harsh to drop Gilbert before that previous game with his record while Al Ghazali was out injured. So because of that, we'll bring on Gilbert here with a half hour left to hopefully break the deadlock. And then a couple of minutes on from that previous substitution, just now checking on some player fitness because a few players are down to Red Hearts, and one of those players is Nathan Walker at right wing on a 6.5. He's on the lowest rating, so the former Phoenix man and Josh Tolubi can come on for him with our final sub 20 minutes left, still nil all. And almost inside the last 10 minutes of this game, might be time for us to go attacking like we did late with AFC Auckland struggling for a goal. Decent chance there for the Pane from a free kick, but unfortunately that one gets tipped onto the bar. And now it is time for us to go more attacking with these players. The wingbacks, they can go on to attack also. We'll chuck the Pane onto a DM on support. He should be a bit better in that role considering he usually does play as a deep line playmaker. Also go a bit higher in terms of tempo. Go a bit wider, all that stuff that we were doing with this tactic late with AFC Auckland. We'll see if it works with these guys down here at Kashmir Technical. As you can see, stats-wise, certainly been the better team, so not too worried about that. Would be a little bit frustrating, though, if we did drop points, but even then, I think a draw here wouldn't hurt too much. Christchurch United still a little bit behind us on that league table. With another late free kick here to Lepane. Let's see if this time he can put this one in the back of the net. Goes looking... For that top left corner, but unfortunately, the taco not quite forced into a saving goal there for Salwin, and it finishes a nil or draw, thankfully. Don't think I ripped you off too much in terms of goals today, because there were six in that first game, but certainly a game we should have probably picked up three points from, but to be fair, away from home, that's not too bad against the team who have got off to a pretty hot start this season. My thumbnail guy actually played quite well as a centre-back, maybe need to sign him, albeit. 32 years old in game. So sorry, Blake, I'm not too sure if I'll actually sign you. Might not be the best idea for the longevity here at Cashmere Technical, but those are our first drop points of the season, but still three points clear off the back of that nil all draw with Selwyn United. So our winning run here at Cashmere Technical to start our time in charge of the club has now come to an end off the back of that nil all draw with Selwyn United, albeit, as I said, played quite well, just not quite efficient enough in front of goal, but still in a pretty good position in the Southern League. Three points clear these days of both Christchurch and Selwyn United. And as I said, already just halfway through the Southern League, does look like we are the three teams fighting for those two promotion spots up to the National League Championship. Hopefully, if we play like we did against Selwyn United back at our home ground, we can beat those guys. And then hopefully it should just mean it's a fight between them and Christchurch United for that second spot, albeit Still going to play those guys twice in that back half of the season, and that could be interesting because they're certainly the team I'm expecting to give us the toughest time here in the Southern League. And also while we're here, quick update on the other divisional leagues. There's what's happening in the Central League. Western Suburbs, who are the OFC Champions League winners this season, they just beat Auckland City in the final. They're on top, currently Wellington Olympic and Northern Rovers are the teams who would qualify for the National League and also I suppose Phoenix Reserves are kind of from the central area and the Northern League table, Auckland City on top as you'd expect, followed by Tauranga, Auckland United as well as Melville United. So that's what the tables do look like in the National League about halfway through the Southern League season also have got the draw for the second round of the Chatham Cup, not tactic Sean, need to go over to the schedule. We are taking on a team who are around the central area in Brooklyn Northern, but to be fair, those guys are a fair way down the pyramid, so don't know if that's actually a game that we'll come back for. That should be one where you can win pretty comfortably, those guys down in the second division of that central area. So I think that's a game we can skip over, but that will do it for today's episode. We bash Ferry Me Bays in our first round of the Chatham Cup, but then drop points away to Selwyn United. If you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so or really are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. I think we're probably going to come back next time for a game around about the time that we take on Christchurch United. That's definitely the team that we take on next who are our biggest threat here in the Southern League. The first time we'll take those guys on. So I think it's worth showing it. If we fresh them, can probably then just skip through the rest 
of the Southern League season a bit quicker, albeit only one more episode left off the back of tomorrow's one for this week. So we might just finish up the Southern League by the end of this week. If all is going well, but also in the month of June, we do have the OFC Nations Cup. So if we don't find a suitable game that looks interesting domestically, we might actually come back and bundle up that Christchurch United game with the final of that competition. To be fair, it might be an absolute freshing that we do give to one of the Oceania teams, but it could be a mix of international and domestic football coming up in tomorrow's episode. Also, I have picked a couple of new boys as well for that competition. So it could be a good chance for you guys to see what they do look like in the All Whites environment. They're definitely probably going to come back tomorrow, take on Christchurch United. Just not too sure if the other game will be the AFC Nations Cup final or maybe could be an interesting tie in the third round of the Chatham Cup. We'll see what other game we bundle up with that big matchup in the Southern League against Christchurch United. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.